a world that looks away. The forgotten humanity in Palestine's unbearable suffering. In a world that prides itself on progress. Where skyscrapers touch the sky and technology connects every corner of the earth. There is a place left in ruin, struggling to survive a nightmare beyond words. In Palestine, over 42,000 innocent souls. Children who once played in the streets, mothers who nurtured dreams for their children, fathers who worked tirelessly to provide, have been lost. These lives were cut short in violent waves of Israeli war, while the world watched from afar, silent, indifferent cold. This is not just a tragedy. It is an open wound on the conscience of humanity. The haunting images of children lifeless on hospital floors, mothers wailing for their loved ones, families shattered beyond repair. These are not mere casualties in a faraway place. They are human beings as real as you and me. And yet, as bombs fall and blood spills, the world's leaders issue statements that ring hollow. Phrases like deep concern and calls for restraint. Words that carry no weight, no urgency. Where is the humanity that should rise to defend them? Imagine the lives that have been lost. A little boy named Omar who loved drawing rockets. Not the kind that destroy, but the kind that reach for the stars. Or a girl named Fatima who wanted to be a doctor, to heal the people of her community. Their futures were stolen, dreams extinguished, buried under rubble and smoke. Families have fled their homes, only to see them obliterated only to walk back through the ruins searching for memories of a life that no longer exists. And behind every life lost, there are survivors left with scars too deep to heal, a mother who clutches her child's empty clothes, a father who stares at his hands, wondering why they couldn't protect his family. And still, there is silence. One of the saddest truths of our time is that the world can so easily compartmentalize its empathy. In some places, tragedy brings an outpouring of aid, volunteers, support. But in Palestine, the suffering is wrapped in silence, in bureaucratic debates and endless political games. This silence is as violent as any weapon. It sends a message that Palestinian lives are somehow less than, that their pain is something to be debated rather than urgently addressed. The United Nations, once a beacon of hope to end atrocities and build peace, is bound by red tape, by powers more interested in maintaining alliances than defending the innocent. Where are the resolutions, the emergency interventions, the peacekeepers? The absence of these actions reveals a harrowing reality. That justice, for all its lofty ideals, is selective. And while governments take their time, there are children hiding under kitchen tables, trying to block out the deafening noise of bombs with their hands over their ears. There are mothers who hold their babies tighter, whispering reassurances they know they may not be able to keep. It's not enough to say that this is complex or political. If we reduce this suffering to mere politics, we have failed not just the Palestinians but ourselves. Every passing day, without meaningful intervention, leaves more homes in rubble, more empty chairs at dinner tables, more dreams reduced to ash. We live in a world that pledges never again after each atrocity in history. And yet here we are, turning our backs as it happens once more. Every family in Palestine, every father, mother, and child has a story. They have dreams, too. They feel the same hope, joy, and love that any of us do. To turn away from their suffering is not just indifference. It's a betrayal of the very fabric of our shared humanity. It's a message to every oppressed, marginalized group that, in the end, they may be left alone, screaming into the void. So let us ask ourselves, what lies in our hearts? Can we truly look at these shattered lives and feel nothing? Are we so hardened, so numbed, that we can look at the deaths of thousands of innocents and not feel our hearts break? If we do not stand for the innocent of Palestine, who will stand for us when we fall? The pain of Palestine should not be a far-off tragedy we scroll past on our screens. It should haunt us. It should make us uncomfortable. It should make us cry. This isn't just about Palestine. It's about all of us. It's a test of who we are and what we value. 
Are we a world that believes in justice and dignity, in the sanctity of human life? Or are we a world that turns away when the victims are inconvenient, their suffering too politically costly to acknowledge? For those whose hearts are still soft, for those who feel the pain of the world, let this suffering be our call to action. Let us stand against the silence, speak out against the indifference, and demand that this world remembers its humanity. Because if we allow Palestine's suffering to be ignored, we lose a piece of our own humanity, too.